regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular features are shown. Hello and welcome to Regular Features. Actually, I'm going to do it like the Siggy Man. They don't know that yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> What they don't know is that I'm the Siggy Man. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly sinister. Okay. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to Regular Features, the podcast that's exactly the same every single week. I'm the Siggy Man. <laughs> <laughs> also known as Gav Murphy. Um, and this week, I'm joined by Steve Hogarty. Hello. Did you put your finger up to shut me up or <laughs> make me speak? No, sorry, one question at a time. Yes, you? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? I realised what I did. I was pointed because you're above. <laughs> you're at the top of me. I'm in the middle <laughs> in my Zoom and Joe's below and you're at the top and I pointed. Mm. I don't know who's that for. It's not helpful. It's not helpful at it's all. Not. It looked like you were saying, shush, don't speak when I say your name. Uh, sorry, what? One one person at a time? <laughs> yes, you? Um, sorry, <laughs> it's your joint by Steve Hogarty and Joe Screvels. My hands are behind my back. Oh, sorry. I was waiting for you to point downwards. I needed. <laughs> no, I'm not I, doing it. I'm not doing I need, it. I needed my, the point. My my hands are behind my back now. Okay, I can't be trusted. Well, I'm here. Um, Siggy man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how many cigs you smoked today, Siggy man? An airport pack. <sighs> I don't know how much is enough. in there. Oh, hundreds. One of those bricks. One of those bricks yeah. of Lambert and Butler, the silver ones. Yeah, that your French teacher would come back with on the ferry from Calais on a yeah. on a booze run. And I, I like them so much, I just light the end like a box of fireworks and I smoke it out the other end. And all, oh. all 200 <laughs> of them at the same time. And you shout, smoke them if you've got them at the White Cliffs of Dover and salute. <laughs> that's, that's the way to get home from France. It's, but it's fine because I only go halfway down and then I boot the rest into the sea. <laughs> yeah. That's how real men smoke, Joe. Why? How are you smoking? Uh, you know, I like to um, I like to get one cigar and then plug that into the end of another cigar and so on and so on until I've got a cigar the size of a car and then I say, God, car cigar. <laughs> and then I yeah, just smoke that. How about you, Steve? How do you like to smoke? I just like to say that I find the Siggy Man strange and intimidating <laughs> and not conducive to introducing this week's episode of Regular Features. Oh, yeah. It's How the intro, you? not just the bits in the middle where we haven't got other things to say. <laughs> He's a man out of time. He doesn't, doesn't know about podcasts. He doesn't know the correct etiquette. All right. I love that yes. he's a man out of time, mainly because he's introduced in the outro to this episode. <laughs> so they're going to uh, be, yeah, they're going to be on, on smoky tender hooks. Wait, <laughs> waiting for Siggy Man. Siggy Man could. That's the thing about the Siggy Man. He just throws the word smoke, the adjective smoky in, in otherwise normal sayings. <laughs> People are like, you gotta break a few smoky eggs to make a smoky omelette. Look before you smoke that leap, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Two smoky birds in a hand with eight in a smoky bush. Siggy Man. <laughs> I love this is a great Siggy new character. Man. Siggy Man's Real. so good. Love Siggy Man. Love Siggy Man. Um, he's also what? he's he's made this episode like fucking primer. You have to re listen to it all to actually enjoy any of what's happening at the start. I'd fucking love her if Siggy Man gets cut out now. Like <laughs> Steve gets to the end, he's like, "It's just not funny, actually." Yeah, but Siggy Man's got to stay up top. <laughs> he's folded into all the normal words. I can edit out just the word Siggy. It's just a, just a saying strange I'm man. man. <laughs> saying I'm man. I am man. Doesn't work, Steve. <laughs> um, what feature have you got, Steve, this week? Uh, I went on a rowboat and I fed some swans and other birds. Wow. I interviewed a rock and roll star. I haven't got a feature, but I do have a number of ideas I wrote in my phone, and I'll just probably read them out. 
I'm Gandalf, and I put a spell on you because you're mine. The mines of Moria, that is. <laughs> Regular features. I thought this was going to be the first of three nights on the trot. We were all going to see each other. Mm. But, Joe, you've, you've broken the oh, streak. Yeah, shit. I flaked. I'm sorry. You flaked a quiz. We're going to do a quiz together tomorrow. Steve, mm. do you know what the quiz is about? Do you have any answers? I know, I know that some of the answers are um, Paris, San Francisco, yeah. the Luminaires, Ooh. and uh, 1962. Has Grubs. It, it's got some sort of strange name, doesn't it? Isn't it called like Three Monkeys? Or... Three Monkeys Zeno is the name of the PR agency. Three Monkeys. Oh, it's a PR agency. Yeah. I thought it was like some sort. I thought it was like a cryptic crossword clue in the title or something. Weirdly, right? It like they are co- sort of connected to the feature that I'm doing today because okay. I managed to blag um, tickets to see LCD sound system through Three Monkeys Zeno once. Really? No way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you'll see when you see my feature in a bit. It's quite musical. Oh. Musical like theme it. rather than there are no songs. Oh. Um, sorry. Sorry, can sorry, you sorry. Sing, can you do it to some sort of, you know, tune? a beat? Could you speak to the, yeah, speak to some a sort beat. of New York beat? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause, um, so we'll have this, then a quiz, mm-hmm. and then Mr. Joey Scrubs' birthday. Birthday boy Scrubs. Oh, shit. We're going to go to a series of breweries. I'm just making sure that no one can <laughs> intercept us if this comes out before my birthday. Give him a load of beats. I'm I'm <laughs> going to be sharing our location on the regular features Discord. So oh, that's fine. Everyone in there's fine. Yeah. I don't mind if the Beehive knows where to go. There's actually actually in the Beehive. I've once posted a video of me playing darts in one of those very breweries. Mm. Um, so that's a little treasure hunt clue for these. <laughs> I I actually thought like when I was in Dublin. I was in Dublin, I had a day by myself and I was having a really good time just going around loads of old man pubs, teaching myself to like Guinness. I know you've got a cough, Gav, but it does sound like you're about to cry with how beautiful <laughs> does it, yeah, that yeah. was. Um, teaching myself to like Guinness. <laughs> uh reading, me, reading my book and just generally dicking about on Twitter and stuff. Um, but I was actually thinking, oh, if this goes south and I, I feel a bit lonely, I might just put on Discord and it's anyone in Dublin or a bite <laughs> and then just see what happened. Um, but then I remembered a fucking brilliant story about I was in New York once on a work thing with um, a uh, with an absolute legend from IGN. And we a lot of people go on these trips and you know it's a bit of a mishmash and you don't know who you're going to be with but anyway there was uh, there was two particular fellas from a youtube channel and they were like giving it a big one going oh yeah we're, go- we're gonna do this like little meetup oh are you all right mm. great uh yeah we're gonna do this little meetup we've organized it like ooh, we're worried too many people might turn up genuine thing they said two people turned up the photos, yes. the photos are fantastic. It's like it's not a meetup when the same amount of people come. <laughs> that are organized. That's a, that's a double date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just going for a pipe, you fucking dweebs. <laughs> like you could fucking go find people. You could go out into the street and go, does anyone like to have a pipe with me? And YouTube channel or not, you could get more people to do that. <laughs> like <laughs> As I, as I think you've said about Twitter before, you literally stick your head out of a window and shout yeah. and you'll reach more people. Um, but yeah, that would be my fear that I go, who, uh, who fancies having a beer with me? No one. Absolutely no one. No one comes. But beehive wise, it's not as if we're like absolutely swimming in bees. Mm. So if no one comes, it's like, well, maybe there's just no bees in Dublin. Maybe we've not caught on in Dublin yet. And that's just, that's fine. True. You don't have to feel bad about it. If you're big time boy YouTubers, yeah, like whatever they're called, the mm. annoyed gamers, I'm guessing <laughs> yeah. they were called, <laughs> then, uh, then you know, you've got yourself to blame if no one comes to your New York meetups. I was going to say a really funny name for them then, but then it wasn't what they're called. But... It, I mean, I'm sure I was going to be like two angry dweebs, and I was like, "That's got to be a YouTube channel." 
the hundred percent. And then they're going to be like, oh, two are you slagging off two are angry dweebs. Then we're going to get into some KSI situation where the three <laughs> of the us are going to be up two angry dweebs. I was just about to tell a story about some horrific YouTubers I once went on a trip with, and they're basically called two angry dweebs. Oh, so no. now I can't tell the story because it would yeah. be throwing them under the bus. I, w- I, re- I, I, I really want it known that they weren't called two angry dweebs. I think there's like nine of them on this channel. So oh I, it, so they know it was, was it so the it, side men. No, it wasn't. No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Uh, we were talking briefly about um, features. I'm going to yeah. put it out there. Mm-hmm. Don't got one. Mm-hmm. But what I do have, and I thought we could just have a quick chat about it, Cut it out if it's no good. <laughs> yeah, um, like, you see the news? Well, there's some abortion yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> thought, uh, maybe we could have a little riff back and forth about uh, some pretty, pretty it's, full yeah. on. Uh, Whose side are you on? Roe or Wade? Uh, no, I was just going to read out some of the things that I've written in the dead of night on my notes app under right. my the feature nook section. Always just love see this. If it's, just spark any ideas. Um. Because I've got a lot of, you know, the cla- the modern Scrabble's classics, like where did Plemons, the name, come from? Sia is my cousin. I am medically dehydrated. They're the good notes. <laughs> That's the stuff where I remember what I was talking about. The thing is um, about these, uh, that really annoys me is, and I mean, to be fair, I've made peace with, you know, being on a podcast with uh, people who are funnier than me, and I'm fine with that. But the stuff that you don't know, but what it is is funnier than anything I can come up. It's really annoying. Actually, I don't think that's true. You're about to hear some of it. <laughs> I mean, take for example, all in caps, just the words "Who shook my milk?" <laughs> what was what what feature was I imagining in the dead of night? <laughs> I probably woke up at three in the morning and went, who shook my milk? Are you shaking Anna awake? It was true. (laughs) What do you do? Uh, I've got who shook my milk. I've got just, this must have been a jingle idea. I've got Mm. sing Roseanne to the tune of Hosanna to the King of Kings. (laughs) I like... That's not an idea. That's just, it's not even the same number of syllables. (laughs) That's why you've secretly uh, not done it. You're like, ah, oh, that's a job, actually. That's a job to get that one going. This one's really recent. This honestly has to be the last two weeks because it's after some of the stuff I've done recently. Yeah. And I have no memory of writing this at all. Mm-hmm. It just says, an AI that cannot stop saying, I'm Condoleezza Rice. That's, that's all it says. Again. I must have imagined a feature to go with this, yeah. but I've just gone, this is going to be enough to, yeah. sh- to shake my imagination, to, to wake up and write about an AI that can only say I am Condoleezza Rice. Um, I like it. Uh, I'm just seeing if there's anything else. Uh, is there anything new? Uh, just, oh yeah, and there was one time where I just misspelled the name Keanu Reeves and it just said Gianu Ron. That's it. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Gianu Gian- Ron. Gianu Ron. <laughs> Isn't that his real name? <laughs> I think it might be. Yeah, that might be his original, uh, his original given like name. The, and then he I, found out someone in equity already had that name, so he couldn't be Gianu Ron. <laughs> I love the idea of Gianu Ron going to all of Gianu Reeves' auditions and not getting yeah. them. <laughs> but just he shows up to the auditions and it's like right I'm here for the uh, the role of Neo yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking Keanu Reeves is here <sighs> again my nemesis <laughs> Keanu Ron put upon again by big Hollywood and he's like a pizza chef looking guy <laughs> <laughs> so yeah if anyone uh, you know among the readers has any ideas for any of those features they're all yours I'm not going to yeah. use them so, That's a good idea, actually. What if they make a film about Gianu Ron and it becomes like a multi million pound blockbuster and you don't see cent one? Well, look, That's a really good I've point. put it out there and it's not a verbal contract that I said I'm not going to use them for money. That's exactly what a verbal contract is. <laughs> no, you, I'm saying the verbal just contract. You're describing a verbal contract. <laughs> I take back my verbal contract. Gianu Ron ripping up my... in. Verbal contract. Can you rip up a verbal contract by just making the sound of ripping something up? <laughs> no, you've got no to more spit. verbal contract. You've got to spit it. That's legally don't, binding, that is. Don't use Gianni Rob. 
It's mine. <laughs> You like a regular feature too. Regular regular feature too. Malfunction. Malfunction. Guess who contacted me today? Um, Mary Magdalene from the Bible. <laughs> Close. Oh, uh? <Or> what? <laughs> One of the other biblical whores. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't mean to say whores like, like that. Whores. <laughs> Horse, horse, oh, yeah, yeah. Get, yeah. Get sex positive, right. say more jaunty, then it's yeah. probably fine. Every um, time I've heard my priest say it, he says it in that tone of voice, and I have to unlearn that behaviour. I'm sorry. It's because it's always followed by and the shopkeepers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you bring it up with him every time he says you? Be like, actually, Phil, could yeah. you, could you not, could you That's not? That's problematic language, Father Phil. <laughs> Father Phil. <laughs> um, I was contacted by someone from Columbia Records. What? Wow. Columbia Records, a division of Sony Music Entertainment, a subsidiary of Sony Corporation of America, like what PlayStations are made of. So it's different. It is spelt... Columbia, as in the Sony record company, not oh, yeah. the country of Columbia, which would be... A oh, yeah. Record. It's spelled differently. <laughs> it's spelled Columbia different. record. <laughs> yeah. 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 Big style. Um, <laughs> That's incredible. Do you know where they're based? New uh, York City. New oh, York. I say Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. They contacted me to offer us regular features... An exclusive interview with one of their artists. Oh my god! That's Is it crazy. X C X. Now I don't know oh. if you know, but the rock and roll band Arcade Fires have got oh. a brand new L L P L P. Yeah, it's that album. Now, if, if I've read my music press, then it's Reflector. It's definitely Reflector, which wasn't six years ago when I last paid attention to Arcade Fire. Mm. I've heard but, the new Arcade Fire's LP being played on the radio, and I, I, I thought, wow, now that's, I'm digging that sound. That's what I call music. <laughs> we need to get them on my podcast. <laughs> well, I got contacted by them, offering us... Mm-hmm. An exclusive interview with their, their lead singer, Wynne Butlers. Oh, not right. Yeah. <laughs> Why? What's wrong? You got beef with him? No, I just, I thought he might have a more arcade focus. I thought he might be called like Gallagher Pac-Man or... Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Promenade. <laughs> Tim Crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Crisis the second. <laughs> That's his son, uh, who's also in the band. <laughs> it's um, a family thing. It's a, it's a big family thing. They're like a cult. Um, the arcade thing lives and dies in the, na- in the name of the band, I believe. <laughs> like, mm. I, I, I don't think they give a fuck about it. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. And I have no idea why. And I, I still... So I, I started figuring out maybe to do... We, we, I mean, we've had several musical guests. Mm-hmm, Secret mm-hmm. Santana, her with the cha-cha heels. Yeah, uh, yeah. Other ones, like Kate Bush. Kate, Kate Bush, Bush has on been here. on. Yeah, Bushy's been on. Bushy, <laughs> she hates that. She hates it. That's why <laughs> she hides know her so all well. the time. Bushy's been on, but I, but I thought maybe it could be that. Maybe it's like just the kind of vibes we give off. They think mm. will pair well with what the album. Is about I don't know. Um, I mean, I said yes straight away because I'm a big Arcade Fires fan. Uh, I've seen them live a bunch of times. Wasn't a massive fan of the uh, the last album, I think, because I think that had the song on it. There was like, there's so much content, but are we really content? Oh, that's that like a piss. I think that's in a song. I think that's generally in one of their songs. Oh As lyricists, they they're all over the place. Careful. 
because you never know what's coming up. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> so, might, might have to send this to the old Columbia Records PR. Um. But I didn't. I was obviously going to mention that to win. Like you, I don't think you would do that, would you? Like if you like someone, as long as, as long as they've not done. Like if you like someone's work and then mm. they do something shit. I mean, in the work sense, not like fingered Behavior. someone they weren't meant to. Yeah. Um. Then I think it's fine to have them on and not mention yeah. it. Mm. Like it's, yeah, you don't have to once... get them on. First question does have to be, "What the fuck were you thinking?" Yeah, I once did an entire interview with Joe Cornish, who I love mm. to the core of my being, but I thought his new film was absolute shit, and we had to talk about that a little bit, and then I just oh, veered away from it as much as possible, and it was great. You'd be like, instead, can we just talk about podcasts? Actually, instead of talking about podcasts, can we do the Adam and Joe show, mm. but it's going to be Joe and Joe. <laughs> and it's two guys who sound like Joe from the Adam and Joe show the yeah, entire way. Because through. I've modeled my entire personality on that podcast. So yeah, 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 yeah. can we do that instead of talking about fucking a knight in King Arthur's ass or whatever it's called? Like, Have you ever thought about a guy called Gianu Ron? <laughs> Me and you. <laughs> Could you imagine for a second, Joe Cornish? Gianu Ron. He's sort of a pizza chef looking guy. And he's always going to auditions with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> if we if we sit down to watch Attack the Block Two together, and what's his name? Uh, Keanu Ron. Keanu Ron. No, the fella from Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> he comes in and he goes, "Where's my friend, Keanu Ron?" <laughs> <laughs> then we know that Cornish is, has got his sticky little ears all over this podcast. Anyway, um, so I was like. Yeah, obviously, let's get him on the podcast. Let's get an exclusive interview. Cheeky little Sclusi. I know you're up for that. Head of news of IGN. Loves a Sclusi. Love a Sclusi. Love a Sclusi. One of those letters I, G, or N must stand for music. Yeah. <laughs> well, I International for... gaming music. <laughs> the, the I in IGN stands for Exclusi. I know that. <laughs> <That's> the... <laughs> I work there, all right? Um... So I was like, yeah, let's get them on. Let's get a little exclusive. Um, they sent me an early sample of the album, right? Hello. For research, um, they said, I just did air quotes. This is a podcast. Yeah. Ten years we've been doing this. Um, <laughs> and I said, I said, yeah. And then when it arrived, you, I learned the name of the album for the very first time. Do you know what the name of Arcade Fire's album is? And this isn't, this isn't a joke. We... <laughs> Let's just call we. Like like what comes out of dicks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not the Nintendo we. Or even no, the collective like, us. No, it's called we. <laughs> Do they mean like we what as in... comes out of dicks? Yeah. Do they mean and it Fanny's. like little? And Fanny, sorry. Or do they mean it like human juice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that's the first single. Is that is we. that the song? Is it little or is it human juice? It's not spelled we, is it? Uh, well, I that's the thing. I've not seen the official art. I've only heard it on the phone because I called oh. up the PR just to make sure. I was like, is this album called We? And she said, yes. Now, if you have any follow-up questions, I won't be able to answer them because I've got to go because <laughs> I'm also Madonna's agent. And she's just had a nip slip at the Met Gala. <laughs> Um, so I, so I was like, and the, obviously the, the, what, when they send you the preview as well, it's not the real cover. It says we it just is in handwriting. I was like, it's a bit smudged. So I was like, they've called this arcade fire piss. Um, <laughs> so I was like, have they offered this to us? Because we talk about funny things and we say piss on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Could have. Yeah. I, obviously, I'd already said yeah at this point, so it can't back out of a sclusi. Um, and I'm not in the business of backing out sclusies. So I said, well, I tell you what, I've got to interview him. I'll just ask it. I'll just ask Wim Butler out of Arcade mm -hmm. Fires why one of the most famous bands in the world named their album after piss. Yeah. Um, after a small plastic cup of piss. Yeah. So this is four clips from my interview with Wim Butler. We actually we we're actually thinking about putting the whole thing up for patrons. Um, so if you are a patron, look out for that because it's God, forty nice. minutes long, 
and we're going to put a whole interview that I did with him up As on... Exclusive within exclusive. Exactly, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> double scluse. Exclusive or scluse. Uh, Kramer versus Kramer. Scluse. Um, so you ready for versus <laughs> <laughs> You ready for the first clip of my exclusive interview with Wim Butler? Here we go. Okay, this is Gab Murphy for Regular Features, and I'm here today with the one and only singer, songwriter, musician, and multi instrumentalist frontman of RK Fire. It's Mr. Wynn Butler. Hiya. Hey, man, how's it going? Yeah, how you been? Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. Hang on, I'm getting a nod from your assistant to get going. So I guess I want to kick things off, Wynn. Is it hard coming up with album titles? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's um yeah because c- you've called this album we i'm a and that, that can obviously mean you know one of a few things but the first thing that comes to my mind certainly is um is piss because we that that means piss doesn't it, it could be i mean it's it's tough to define as well yeah, yeah. Uh, not get me wrong. Yeah, in one sense, it 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 can be really tough to to define, but in another sort of more tangible sense, um, it 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 really does mean piss to me. Like we is one of the most meaningful words with the least number of letters. So it's sort of it sort of there's it's a very potent word. You're at, yeah, absolutely, completely. Like uh, I have had quite potent ones. Um, like if I've not drunk enough water. <laughs> Um, or oh, I went on a stag do once to Croatia, and when I came back, it was yeah, it, it, it was coming out like Nutella, but from from my penis. Yeah, that's my first. That's the first bit of the interview. Um, you have got him. This is the mark of a good interviewer. You've got him on the ropes. Do you from think? The very start. Listen, that bit at the start where he just goes uh, when he yeah. realizes you're going straight for whatever the jugular of the dick is. The, the gotcha gav has got him. Yeah, yeah, you've got him down that big vein on the back of the dick. But you're also not cornering him. You're giving That's him right. enough uh, free reign to uh, try and mm-hmm. explain himself, but yeah. you're not letting him off the hook because mm-hmm. he did call an album we. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no getting around it. Exactly. I, I was surprised you didn't bring up the potency of a Barocca we. I thought you were going to go oh. straight for the neon. I don't know. I'm thinking Pink Floyd. I'm thinking yeah. Arcade Fires, Neon Baraka piss shooting is, across the galaxy. This is why you're the king of exclusives. Uh, oh. Exclusive you know. GN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know how to ask someone a question about pissing yeah. on a crowd, and yeah. that's my Fuck. gift. God damn it. Next time. I'm, I mean, there's doubt not going to be a next time if you hear the rest of this. All right, let's okay. have this, the second clip of my interview with Wim Butler's from RK Fires. Okay. All right, let's just, okay, let's go back to the beginning then. Like, where did the album name Piss come from? George Orwell is sort of one of my great heroes, and he... And he told you to name the album Piss. Was there ever any, like, other thoughts? Like, I don't know, like Piss Dungeon? Um... Little Wind's Big Space Piss. Twelve weirdos from Canada pissing in a bucket and then the ugly one drinks it. Never use a long word if there's a short word that means the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, that, that's, I mean, that's, that's why you're the writer. And, uh, this, uh, actually, this might come across quite personal, but um, do you take a lot of pisses together as a band? A band is really a wee gang, you know? Sorry, mate, do you mean like a wee gang? Like... <laughs> Like Scottish, we like you're you're little and that, or do you mean you go around as a gang pissing on other people? The second one, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, is that a gang that a lot of people want to get into? Like, is it easy to get into that gang? It's like you kind of have to like we. It's like, well, yeah, I love her stuff. Yeah, get me in, get me in, bro. You're shaking your you're shaking your head. You're not, you're not feeling it. You're not feeling it. No. There has to be something that 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 transcends just we. Yeah. To be honest, I don't know if I've if I've got that in me. Win. Um. Mostly because I don't understand what transcending we, we would involve. If if I'm honest. I like. Um, There's a rapport. You can tell that he is, as I say, rattled. 
because mm. he keeps nodding or shaking his head inaudibly, and you have to keep saying that he's doing it, mm. yeah. which, you know, he doesn't, as a man in an audio medium. Well, I don't think he's done many podcasts. It. Oh, really? And there is also a video version of this, which we will make ex- exclusively available to patrons. Uh, 40-minute video <laughs> length. <laughs> it's a three-part thing. It's like Get it's Back. Four, it's in 4K. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, we're gonna have to tell people that's not true soon. <laughs> we can't have people signing up to see it. If anybody thinks that that is true, then you have to make it. They are thick. Thick. one. I'll have to make it, and two, they're thick. There are big <laughs> arcade fire fans out there who might yeah. hear that we've got him on the podcast and yeah. sign up for the beehive. But like, it's still like, it's. I feel like this is, you know. Like the first two rounds of a boxing match is more like flirting. Mm. It's just sort of feeling each other out, you know? Like, But I still think there's like a playfulness. Um, it's a rapport for sure. Uh, you've not really given me a straight answer on the whole piss thing. Um, but I mean, where we've gone now is he's talking about P gangs that his band is in going around pissing on people. So at this point, I'm thinking Scoop. Got, scoops? Got a little scoop. Probably. Probably should be called Piss Dungeon. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, maybe that's maybe that's I've hit a nerve, and he I was like, you "You've been on my, you've been in my secret files." So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, "Scoops, I'm going to be on the NME before the day is out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll sell it to the Sun, and I know they, I know they're bad, but they got the most buns. Got as a journalist, so you're going to get printed in the NME and then sell a copy of that directly to the Sun." To the sun. <laughs> Yeah. Before it gets its new stands. Before they love her. They love all that. They'll be into it, let me tell you. Um, all right, let's hear clip three of my interview with Wim Butlers from RK Fires. All right, I feel like I'll get in trouble if I don't um approach it a little bit more, but I lo- I want to talk a bit more about this piss gang that you you guys are in. Like how how do you decide who's in the gang? Like is there a initiation process? Is it's a very can be a very fraught and difficult process, but at the other end, the other end, you mean the ass. I've always thought of it as sort of meat in the middle. Mm. What well, what do you mean in the middle? Like the piss and the poops in the in a big plastic tub. Like like what what function would that serve when? I think that we and passing through the band is part of what like it's almost like a translator chip, mm. like so for the common humanity. We are you, are you, is he all right? Is he is he all there? Is he like medically mad? She said that bit at the end. He just starts going talking about translator chips. I generally had no idea, and then that bit at the end, mm-hmm. that's me talking to his PR, going like, I thought I was gonna get in trouble. Did he's just, he's just going off on one? Mm. Not, is he medically mad? She was on her phone. She didn't even see. Like she, she went pissing out. I think she was window. on. I think she was on Deliveroo. What? I think she was thinking about sandwiches and what she was getting later. Her clients ranting about yeah. transponder chips and piss and shit in a plastic tub meeting in the middle. Or did he say the meat in the middle of oh. piss and the shit is oh, like, like the, the taint. Yes. The taint, that's the meat in the middle. But, I mean, even that, it's just bonkers. The guy's off his bloody rocker by this point. He's doing a he's doing a Charlie Sheen, though. She's on Deliveroo. Unbelievable. This is how we get to a uh, tiger winning, or whatever happened to Charlie Sheen in that yeah. period where a man had a mental breakdown and everyone thought it was hilarious. Mm. Uh, I think mean, it's yeah, it's not Butler. quite like, I, I, want, I, want, I want that on the record. He it does seem like he is all there. Oh, he does. He does actually. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was f- there was feeling behind his eyes, which actually makes it scarier. Because he believes every word of it. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. All right. Uh, final clip then, because I mean, it is getting quite upsetting. I I've only ever done sort of like softball interviews, like film people and uh like games. This is Paxo level stuff now. And mm. I, I, I was out of my depth, I'll be honest. Like really out of my depth. But also I didn't want to let you guys down either. Like that's big on my on my mind, you know? Um so yeah, and then, and then this is the last bit now. Win, mate, um gotta say uh I, I I really at this point have no idea where you're coming from. Um quite I'm quite worried about you. Uh, hang on, I think the lady is wrapping me up. 
no, 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 I got ages. I've got, I got ages left. Okay, um, brilliant. Uh, um, I want to, I suppose I've got to bring this up. When, like, I, I want to ask you about reports. You've been slinging these big tubs of win special piss mix that you've been mixing together over the audience. Gets me more in touch with my own humanity by being in touch with someone else's we. And so it ultimately makes me, um, we is, it increases my humanity. That's like how, ultimately that's one of the deepest ways you can kind of connect. Oh, I don't really, I don't really know what to say to that win. Um, do, do you think the audience like getting covered in that? Like, it doesn't sound like a laugh. Um, i got to say, I wouldn't be up for it. But you, you're saying the audience are into it, I. Well, you know why it is? I mean, it's like, if you're in the desert and there's a watering hole, you have all these fantastic animals that show up at the watering hole, but they're all there for the wee. So the audience are the, are the animals and the piss is their food. You're all drinking wee and out of the same. You're all drinking out of the same well. I, I, I think we should leave it there, mate. This is, uh, this is generally quite upsetting stuff. Uh, look forward to the tour, though. Yeah. They are a great live band. So I am still looking forward to the tour. Uh, they always put on a good show. Just um, six or seven rows back. Oh, yeah. Back by the bar. Back by the bar. Back by the bar. Back by the bar. I'm not yeah. going to be getting involved in any of that. That's, you know, that's for the young kids, that is. But yeah, I, I mean, I was bonkers. I didn't, I, uh, I, as I said, out my depth pretty quickly with that one. Um, you can't account for how these celebrity types are going to be these days. Mm. You know, anyone can become a celebrity with enough piss and vinegar, and they will. <laughs> and you can leave the vinegar. <laughs> Ooh, squirty, squirty. You squirty, Bertie. Ooh, squirty, squirty. You dirty, Bertie. Boys. I'm back from the opticians. Again, you can't get oh. me out of the freaking opticians. Oh, my God. Uh, this it. time... Boy loves it. I've got... Uh, she put eye drops in my eyes that made them... Made my sphincters relax. <gasps> my eye sphincters, Joe. You keep your head out of the gutter. <laughs> um, so you can see they're quite big. I've got yeah. big... Oh, they're still big, relaxed. Dilated. Hang yeah, she's going to no, be relaxed. Do that again. We'll put this in the beehive. We'll put this in the beehive. How many um, hours ago was this? This was at 9.30 a.m. Shut so up. So I'm going to have big eyes for the rest of the week. The <laughs> no, week? The rest of the day. The rest of the day. It's literally almost 13 hours yeah. later since that happened. And it's I'm still blinking a lot. Getting his money's worth. Getting mm -hmm. his money's worth. She did one of those close-up retinal exams and... Yep. She immediately identified me as a cyclist. I was like, "How do you? How can you tell from my eyes that I'm a cyclist?" She said she, said she could see the reflection of car oncoming cars <laughs> and the fear. You still have your you still had your lid on. That's where it was. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I was still on my bike. Yeah. I told you to leave that outside. Uh, I had microscopic metal particulates in my oh, eyes. What? Oh, God. Uh, just, they were invisible to the naked eye, but she had an eye scanning machine and showed me what it looked like. And it was like tiny, tiny bits of glitter in and around my tear ducts and the bottom of my eye. It's so like, you, you're what? either a cyclist or you go to Professor X's school for the gifted. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a useless mutant. All he does is cry metal and shit. Uh... Does that make you never want to cycle again? It makes me want to wash my eyes all the time. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to... I'm going to wash my eyes so much, you'll know I'm coming from the sound of... Clean eyes. Wet wipes slapping on lids. So I'll be honest, mate. It sounds like a wind-up. It sounds like when you go in and they, like, tap your car... At the mechanic and they tap your car going, that's not good. That's not a good noise. <laughs> that's going to cost you. And you're you. like, oh, shit. Be like, um... You come in. She's taken one look at your hamstrings. Gone. Ooh, they. That's those are ha those are hammies that belong to a cyclist. If I ever saw one, <laughs> and she's gone. You're a cyclist. And do you know how I know that? Metal in your eyes. You've shat it. All of a sudden, you're buying fucking eye wipes. 
Um, which are for computers, actually. Compressed air from Maplins. <laughs> Straight into the pocket of big optician. Big eye, big specs. I don't want to get I don't I don't want to get too far off topic, but yeah. how how did they find a, a a substance that you could pour in your eyes safely that just makes your eyes get bigger? Who's done that? I don't I it must be like a muscle relaxant. Yeah. But what if it made your eyes relax rather than just bits of your eyes? What if your eyes just went all I don't know, flat? <laughs> and then they they slipped out like little tiddly winks. That'd be awful. <laughs> they didn't think this through. God no. Uh, good job that didn't happen, Joe. I agree. What a whimsical been... thing that would that it, would it were? <laughs> <laughs> would that it were indeed, Joe? <laughs> anyway, after all of that business, I needed to calm down. So I do what I do every time I need to calm down. And I went for a row on a rowboat on a lake. Uh, this is a thing I actually did at the weekend. I went rowing in Hollow Pond, Leytonstone. Mm-hmm. And guess what? I saw several different kinds of bird. <laughs> Ten birds. These are all birds that I fed with things you're not supposed to give the birds. But I think, <laughs> you know what? I don't see the birds very often, so I'm going to give them a treat. Mm-hmm. You're like the cool uncle, cool yeah, uncle cool Steve's uncle. rowing by <laughs> with some knickknacks, <laughs> <laughs> and it's the scampi and lemon ones. You haven't been able to get those for ages. He must have been saving them for this. Ten birds I saw on the lake and fed mm-hmm. by Steve Hogarty. One, a black swan. <laughs> on my rowboat adventure, I encountered a black swan, like out of the Natalie Portman film Black Swan which I haven't seen, but I assume is about a jumped-up goose who disguises herself as a human ballerina to rise through the ranks of ballet school and become a dancer for the Bolshoi Ballet, until, just before the opening night of the Nutcracker, on the most important day of her life and at the apex of her audacious dancing career, she sees a member of the audience eating a loaf of bread in the front row and goes absolutely ballistic batshit honking and flapping her wings in frenzied excitement, causing the corps de ballet, who now finally realise that their principal dancer is actually waterfowl incognito, to attack the swan using the only weapons they can lay their hands on, the titular nuts out of the nutcracker. (laughs) Dead of nut drama, the black swan lays all battered and feathery lifeless on the stage, and one member of the audience remarks, Surely it would have been more ironic for this to have happened during the opening night of Swan Lake. To which his wife replies, No, it was the Nutcracker because the Black Swan's downfall was she was nuts for crackers. To which her husband replies, Well, that would make sense if it had been crackers she went nuts about and not a sliced pan of Moscow Hovis. Weren't you even paying attention? And all of that dialogue would have been in Russian. Anyway, I met a Black Swan on the lake and I fed it seven big sweet potato crisps from Marks and Spencer's. Two. I just want to point, sorry, I just want to point out, I don't mean to get in the way, mm. Moscow Hovis, great name for a really big drug. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Three normal swans. Shortly after meeting a black swan, I rode my rowboat right up to three white swans, or as I would have called them if I hadn't just met a black one, just normal swans. These swans were all courting one another by arching their wings up and craning their heads backwards until they were in a perfect bowl shape. This actually happened. Except these were bowls that if you looked inside them, you'd see a swan's horny little shagger head, as if you've just been eating a bowl of beaks for breakfast and were down to the very last one. (laughs) I haven't read this back. (laughs) I snapped half a big fancy cracker out for these fuckboy swans and waved it around above my head to try and draw their attention towards my rowboat. But their heads were recessed so far into their fluffy bodies that they couldn't see me or the fancy cracker. Then I said the word crackers in a sing-songy kind of way, like, Crackers! (laughs) Crackers! In the hope that maybe the swans had a rudimentary grasp of some swan-relevant English words and would come floating over towards my rowboat in search of that sweetie-wheatie crunch. 
but it was not to be. They were more interested in, and this is the swan's words, getting the hole away. <laughs> 3. The black swan again. The next <laughs> bird I met on the lake was the same black swan from before. The black swan didn't seem to have any friends in the entire world except for me, and that was only because I'd given him some really big sweet potato crisps earlier. And don't tell him this, but I'd only given him those because it turned out they had milk powder in them, so I couldn't have them. That's when I noticed that the black swan had bright orange dust all over its sticky beak, from that time when he was snarfling up sweet potato crisps. If the lake master saw the absolute state of this messy awful swan, then I could kiss goodbye to my twenty-pound rowboat deposit and face potentially unlimited fines for desecrating a beak with contraband crisp powders. Thinking fast, I retrieved the unwanted half-cracker from my breast pocket and pointed it at a black swan, like I was a football referee booking the swan with a brown card, <laughs> which is the appropriate penalty for having a disgusting mouth. <laughs> the filthy black swan spotted the cracker immediately and glid towards me, all calm and collected, like he couldn't couldn't give a fuck about crackers, but I knew from metaphors about swans that underneath the surface his legs were going so cracker-wild that any nearby fish would have said it was embarrassing. When the swan was within neck length, I dropped the cracker into the lake, tricking the swan into plunging his entire head into the water and thereby washing away the incriminating beak muck. The only evidence that remained was a weird sort of oily patch on the lake where I'd been chucking crisps around for a long time. <laughs> Four. Moorhen. Five. Don't know. Six. The three times Michelin-starred chef Pierre Kaufman disguised as a widgeon because he wanted to know what wet sweet corn tasted like. Seven. Pigeon. Brackets. Alive. Eight. Canada goose or Egyptian goose. Nine. The other one of the ones I just said. 10. Pigeon. Brackets dead, or maybe sleeping and very wet. <laughs> what did you feed all those last ones? Nothing. Uh, just various crackers. Oh, just, just more and more crackers. crackers. Just different kinds. Just crackers, yeah. Okay. You know this guy with his crackers. Yeah. There was a whole packet. Ended up, uh, yeah. I had so much bird food <laughs> to feed the birds. And they had a bottomless appetite for it. Ended up uh, just shaking the packet in, into the water. And they ate the boat. Go for it. You went to a bottomless brunch with some birds. <laughs> That's why no, they are in. Bottomless appetite for delicious bland crackers. <laughs> you know for when Prosecco. You, sang, you know when you sang that song earlier where you said, crackers, like yeah. that? Is that from the album We by Arcade Fires? <laughs> <laughs> it's the, yeah, it's the first it's the first track. It's called Crackers. Crackers. <laughs> I do want to point out, like, we're not being sponsored by that album, by the way. If you want to go out and listen to it, you go out and listen to it. That's nothing to do with us. We are sort of promoting it by having the lead singer on the show. Mm. But you know, it's you know, one hand, washes, one hand washes the other. Yeah. It's you know. You He's tell me be... if you want to listen to We after that album. Yeah, so, he'll know. he'll be out in Munich tonight, no doubt, on, at a gig, shouting, mm -hmm. sp talking about regular features, going, hey, if you want to hear me, get my fucking ass handed to, to me by a journalist who's amazing and probably win award for his journalism, then yeah, listen to regular features. Then he'll shout, suck this piss! And just <laughs> fire a load of piss out right into the <laughs> waiting mouths of the Munich crowd. Suck wins piss. Suck. That's what everyone else in the band will say. Suck wins piss, you Teutonic freaks. And just <laughs> right into the mouths of a million Germans. What? I don't know. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Didn't have a feature. I've got to try and do something. <laughs> hey, it worked. Did you ever buy yourself a beanie? An alien name to please the queen You can fly in and out the beehive With a bee name beneath me wings 
That's it for this week's episode of the Regular Features Podcast. If you like the podcast, you can go to regularfeatures.com. No, you bloody well can't. You can go to patreon.com forward slash regular features and help us out by donating an amount of your choosing per episode. And when you do, we will take your old human name, lovingly lay it into a grave, bury it with soil, turn to you and scream your new bee name. That's right. Boys? Yes? Could you please give B names to the following new patrons? Mm. Yes. Max Taylor. Taylor made for your pleasures. Stingers? <laughs> stingers? <laughs> Taylor made for your stingers? It's Taylor made for your stingers. I wish we'd got a picture of Gav making the face he did. Because it it's was basically... so suave. I, f- I feel like it's the... Um... It's how I imagine all voiceovers on cigarette adverts from the 90s looked. Mm. Mm. Taylor made for your stingers. Oh, that was good. Oh, I would have been, I would have fucking cleaned up back then. You would have done <laughs> so well. You would have been the fucking voice of the Benny H's. I would have got into smoking as well. Never smoked a cigarette in my entire life. But if I was uh, Lambert and Butler's spokesperson, you better believe I'm going through one of those airport packs a day. 100% in the booth, recording oh. the shit. They're like, do you want us to open the window, Mr. Murphy? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Take out <laughs> more windows, if anything. <laughs> Please give a B name to Phil Cameron. Lights. Cameron. <laughs> Honey! <laughs> Please give a B name to Tom Ryan. Buzzboy Nation. Buzzboy Nation. Yeah. Buzzboy Nation. Buzzboy Nation. Please give a B name to Paul Finneran. I bought twice as many bees as I needed for the hive, and now I can't thin her in. Pin her into the hive. Yeah. <laughs> Is that good enough? Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love it. Give it to me one more time for uh, <laughs> record, <laughs> record bought, keeping purposes. I bought twice as many bees as I needed for the hive, and now I can't fin her in. <laughs> needed for the hive. Take this down. And now, <laughs> memo. <laughs> <laughs> Charmaine, dictate. <laughs> Miss Blankenship, read that back to me. <laughs> Whoa, I almost gave that. Has <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so anyone got any Discord chat? Oh, I thought oh, I didn't know we were done. Um, yeah, because I do. Uh, uh, no, I don't. But um, if you join. Uh, the regular features page, and then you get access to the Beehive, one of the coolest places in. And like I mentioned earlier, if you get in there, there's a chance I might have asked you to come out for a pint with me when I was in Dublin. Didn't happen, but you don't know that. Could have. <laughs> yeah, you could miss out on that thing that didn't happen. So yeah. imagine that. That's the kind of thing Gash that would listed... eat you alive. <laughs> Gash uh... listed three things that could have happened in the Beehive. There could have been some exclusive content from his feature. He could have invited you out for a pint. There could have been even more exclusive content from his feature. Gav Dinger's Hive. You'll never know if those things don't happen until you go in there and <laughs> pay us for true. the privilege. <laughs> also, true. Gav Dinger's Hive would be an excellent bee name. Well, oh, it really would, yeah. You've just got to be called Gav or Schrodinger, and you might get that name. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Well, if you'd like to join the Beehive or get your very own bee name, <laughs> patreon.com forward slash regular features. Love you. We'll be back next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>